Shalom, shalom, shalom. We're now in chapter 29. And um, this series is dedicated to my sons, Mayor David, Joshua, and David Joseph. Chapter 29, Ramban begins, Read this letter once a week and neglect none of it. Fulfill it, and so doing, walk with it forever in the ways of the Lord. And may he be blessed. In God's footsteps. The Torah commands us, And you shall follow in the ways of God, or God's ways. Deuteronomy 28, verse 9. Simply, this means that one ought to emulate the attributes of the Almighty described in the Torah. Just as God is compassionate, merciful, and holy, so must the Jews strive to be compassionate, merciful, and holy. See also the Rambam in Hilchot Deot, Chapter 1, verse 5, the Ramban here alludes to a different level of walking in God's way versus the one discussed by the Rambam in his guide in chapter 3, verse 51. One who walks with God, writes the Rambam, rivets the attention to the Almighty and allows nothing to distract him. It is this walking in the ways of God which is the highest level of human existence. It can only be attained after intense discipline. One who aspires to such closeness to his maker, he writes, should begin by training himself to concentrate on his prayer, on his prayers. After training himself in this, we have the ability to more easily sense God's presence throughout the day, even when it's involved in mundane pursuit. When a man frees his thoughts from all worldly matters, when he obtains correct understanding of the true nature of God and rejoice in that knowledge, it is impossible for any kind of evil to befall him. He always with God, and God is always with him. There is nothing besides him. Rabbi Chaim of Elotzen, uh, Nefesh Chachaim, <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 12 through 13, cites the Talmud in Chulun, chapter 7, verse B, or 7b, which teaches that if a person internalizes the verse, the Lord, he is God, and there is nothing else besides him. As it's stated in Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 35, he will be protected from harm forces. In other words, the evil forces, the debukim, the, the forces of evil. When one accepts God's absolute sovereignty, he places himself fully under his protective wing, as it's indicated in Psalms 91. Although the nature contains many destructive elements, the man of faith understands that they are but marionettes in the hand of the Creator. Nature's leash. The brisker Rav, Rav Yitzhak Zev Soloveitchik, <clears throat> was a def, uh, descendant of <coughs> Rav Haim Volotzen, the author of the Nefesh Chaim. He testified how the statement of faith recorded in Nefesh Chaim literally served as a guide through his life. When he was a young man, Rav Vevel, as the brisker Rav was fondly known, was commanded to appear before the Russian draft board to be inducted into the Tsar's army. This fate was tantamount to both spiritual and physical death sentence. As the date of his appearance, neared, his father, Rav Chaim Brisker, instructed him to concentrate on the above passage from Nefesh, from, from Neshech HaChaim to Rabbi Vevel's great relief, his meeting with the draft board came and was exempted from the draft. Later, the Germans occupied Poland, and at the beginning of World War II, Rav Vevel fled from Warsaw to Vilna. The roads were filled with German troops, and Nazis were everywhere. The danger was awesome. He had Rebevel traveled along undaunted. He never stopped to review the pledge of Nefesh Chachaim. If you always think of God, he will always think of you and protect you from all harm. Think always on God. Just once Rebevel was distracted and his mind wandered onto another place, another thought, immediately as if, as if from nowhere an armed Nazi approached him threateningly. In a flash, Rebel. Rev. Vevel collected his thoughts and focused on Nefesh Chachaim, and the Nazi moved on. Rabbi page 170. Rabbi Yosef Leib Bloch of Telshen, in Shi'urei Da'as, chapter 2, verse 44, explains that the natural forces which threaten mankind, mankind can be compared to a vicious dog with a long leash tied to its neck. When animals pounce, the only one intended victim can save him is by calling to the dog's master to restrain the beast. If the victim fails to recognize the presence of the master, then he is truly in grave danger. 
Similarly, the man fails to perceive the leash upon the forces of nature. He indeed places himself at their mercy. And we end at chapter 29 of the letters for the ages. Our next video, chapter 30, which is the last chapter of the Sefer. Shalom, shalom.